This video is an introduction to different types of credit, as well as a discussion of one method to calculate credit card interest, which is the unpaid balance method. We have two types of credit, closed-ended and open-ended credit. Um, closed-ended has a fixed number of payments and a specific payoff date. Open-ended has no fixed number of payments and no fixed payoff date. So can you think of any examples of these? All right, so let me give you some, some options and see if you can guess which one it is. All right, a credit card. All right, that's one example. Um, a mortgage. A car loan. And here's one that may be less familiar, um, a ready cash loan. All right. So first of all, credit card, um, think about is there a fixed payoff date and are there a fixed number of payments, all right? Is there, you know, if you have a credit card, does the company say, okay, by um, July of next year, your credit card must be paid off, zero balance, right? and, um, you know, you'll be able to pay off the card in um, 20, you know, 12 payments or something like that. Well, no, that's not quite the case. Credit cards are open-ended. Okay. There's no fixed number of payments, and there's no set payoff date. In fact, credit cards are quite um, credit card companies are quite happy if you just continue to um, pay on those cards, continue to accumulate debt, and um, never pay those off. Now, you do need to make a monthly payment, and there is a set minimum amount, so, but that's a little bit different. No, that's still not a fixed number of payments. Okay, it goes on, um, you know, year after year, and there is no specific payoff date. What about a mortgage? This is an example of closed-ended credit. Um, there are a fixed number of payments and a specific payoff date. So common mortgage terms would be uh, uh, 15 years, 30 years, okay? And so then that would tell you a specific number of months that that needs to be paid, and you would have a date in mind when that would be paid off. Um, car loans, same thing. There's usually a fixed number of payments and a fixed payoff date, so that would be a closed-ended example. And then a ready cash loan. Um, this is a loan that's sometimes offered by banks, and you're approved for a certain amount, so let's say uh, like $2,000. And people will often use these as emergency funds. So you get approved for this loan, and it just sort of sits there as a balance in your um, bank account. Okay, usually a separate, um, you know, a separate account from like your checkings or checking or your savings. And it would just sit there, and then as needed, um, you would be able to draw on that loan. So if you were in a major car accident and you didn't have a credit card or another way to pay for that, um, you could draw on that. And then um, same thing that it would that it would activate the loan and you would have a, um, a payment that you would need to make a monthly payment um, and then you would you know continue to pay that off until it's gone. Uh, this is an example of another open-ended type of credit. Um, even though there is a minimum payment, it's kind of like a credit card. Um, there is no fixed payoff date and no fixed number of payments. How is interest charged? Well, for credit cards, we have two common methods, and we'll mostly consider um, credit cards in our examples. So first is the unpaid balance method. Interest is charged only on the balance from the previous month. Um, this is, I think, the most common type of interest. All right, so if you pay off your card at the end of each month, then you don't get charged any interest at all for using that card. Um, on the other hand, the average daily balance method charges you for each day of the month that you carry a balance on that card. So even if you uh, made a big charge on, you know, say the, the first of the month, okay, maybe you charged like $500, and then maybe on the third you paid that off and your card balance is down to $0, right, that's great. And using the unpaid balance method, you would have no interest. But using this average daily balance method, they would charge you a fee for carrying $500 on your card for two days. So let's look at the unpaid balance method first. 
For the month of April, Elliot had an unpaid balance of three fifty six seventy five at the beginning of the month and made purchases of four thirty six fifty. A payment of two hundred dollars was made during the month. The interest on the unpaid balance is one point eight percent per month. Find the finance charge and then the balance on May 1st. Okay, so here's the unpaid balance, and this represents an amount that was left over from the previous month. So whatever Elliot did during um, March, okay, then on March, at the end of March, this amount was left on the card. All right, then um, some other stuff happens during the month, some purchases, some payments, but at this point, to find the finance charge, we're not interested in that. We only are concerned with calculating interest based on whatever was left over from the previous month. Okay, so we're going to focus on the 356.75 and then calculate interest 1.8% per month right, on that unpaid balance. So since this is a monthly rate and it's just one month, then we're just taking a straight percentage of the unpaid balance. Okay, so this is 356.75, and we want to calculate 1.8% of that, so we want to multiply by 0 0.018. Okay. Now notice this is very similar to the simple interest formula. Okay, this is kind of acting as our principal, the unpaid balance amount. Here's the rate, and since it's a monthly rate, the time is in months, and the time is just one month. Okay, so we don't need to multiply by one. Okay, so multiplying, that would give um, a rounded amount of $6.42. So for these problems, let's always round to the nearest cent, and then go ahead and use that rounded amount to go on to um, the next step of the problem. All right, so now we need the balance on May 1st. So now we need to take into account everything that happens on this card during the month of April. Okay, so we start out with 356.75 on the card. Okay. Then anytime a purchase is made, that balance gets added to the card. Okay, so the, the amount that's been borrowed is getting higher. So we're going to add 436.50. Okay. Then a payment is made. That's a good thing. That lowers the balance of the card. So subtract $200. Okay, the amount load, the amount owed is getting lower. And then we also need to take into account this finance charge. That has to get added onto the card. All right, $6.42. So that's everything that happens during April. And um, that would give you the new balance as of May 1st. So if you do all of this addition and subtraction, you end up with five ninety nine sixty seven, dollars And that's the balance on May 1st. Okay, let's try another example. For the month of January, Christina has an unpaid balance of $846.50 from December. She made some purchases and a payment, and we know that the interest on the unpaid balance is 2% per month. We need the finance charge and the balance on February 1st. So let's do the finance charge first. It's 2%, okay, 0 0.02. 2% of the unpaid balance from the previous month. Okay, so 2% of 846.50. Alright, so that's uh, $16.93. Then next we need the balance on February 1st. So we know that as of December, the balance on the card was 846.50. Then the next thing that happened during the month, the purchases, 532.86. Okay, that gets added onto the card. Then she makes a payment of 350, so that lowers the balance of the card. And then we also have to add in the finance charge or the interest. Okay, so 16.93. Okay, so that's everything. And as of February 1st, the new balance on the card will be $1,046.29. Okay, so that's an overview of credit cards, credit card interest, and 
um, one common method of calculating interest, the unpaid balance method.